Ukuna keys, <laughs> I just cut that off, but it's okay. <laughs> And conventionally starting from the front. I just like how the Mac X looks. From the, to the hip line to the ductile spoiler, this strong shoulder line that runs through the whole car, all the way to the back. Mac X, we can say, is the Japanese super saloon car. Let me say that. Or family super saloon car or sports car. With a nice small ductile spoiler. It's not really a spoiler, but it's, it's been embedded in the, in, the, in the trunk of the boot. I just like the look generally of this Mark X and every other Mark X that has come out till now. Except maybe the, the standard ones with the, the normal bumpers and the normal rims. The Mark X was primarily aimed at the Japanese market. Introduced in 204, the X was the successor of the Mark II, which seemed to be more popular in Tanzania than in Kenya back when I traveled there. As a continuation of the previous Mark II, the X is sport-oriented like the old Chaser and luxurious like the Cressa, all in one vehicle. In the Toyota family tree, the Mark X is ranked above the Camry and below the Crown. Toyota took all the great German super saloon ingredients in making the X. Big powerful engine at the front, all the part of the rear wheels. Balanced chassis with double wishbone at the front and multi-link suspension at the rear. Plus Japanese source to go with it. It competes with the likes of Honda Accord, Audi A4, Benz C-Class and BMW 3 Series. All respectable opponents. The X comes in many grades slash trims, but grouped in three categories which are standard as the 250G and the 250G four-wheel drive, sports as the 250GS and the 250S and premium. For this one, you got your 250G to signify your CCs at 2500cc and the Mark X plaque on the side here. Getting into the boot, this car being the 205 one, you didn't get the push start button that came on the other, the 206 models and those that came after. Here you find your key and being that it's your normal key, you have your lock and lock and boot. So to open your boot, you long press the boot and it pops and you take it up. And it has gas struts. I like the mechanism of how this boot opens. It's a small boot, but the way it opens, it gives you the whole space. The opening is not too wide for, let me say, bigger luggages. Let me see if you have those extra large suitcases, but it's wide enough to put in a human being in here, a grown human being, or to put golf clubs, which is the conventional way. You don't be putting people in here. Underneath, you get a bit of your tools with a, a tray to hold your tools and your spare kit. And under that plastic plastic kit, you get your spare wheel. For a spare wheel, it's quite big. You get a 17-inch spare wheel underneath. The seats split in a 40-60 manner. You can't, you can't drop the seats from the front, but you can go around, then drop the seats and put longer items in the boot. And that's the boot. Let's get into the back seat. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before I go, the Mark is the first car from really Japan to come with integrated tailpipes, exhaust pipes on the bumper. The current ones have dual have dual exhaust pipes, yes, but they're not integrated in the bumper as this one. With a bit of a diffuser at the back, your car is spot on, really. The same latch you use to recline your seat is, is the same that you pull down to drop your seats. So that you have more boot space, this to put longer there. The bags have been well thought of, even as they recline backwards and they come forward. And you have this plastic trim that goes down and covers that space that comes down when you recline the seat and covers the space back up when the seat is not reclined. It's a great addition to the car really. Other things you have are like your isofix child seat anchors on both outer, outer seats and your center seat seat belt comes from the top again. Not from the top but from the back of the headrest and you pull it up and latch it there. So it has the bottom part and the top part which is quite interesting really. So getting in, it's quite easy being that the doors 
the doors are quite wide, so it's quite easy to get into the bag. The seats are comfortable, they feel a bit sporty. You've been put in a, in a position to keep you in the seat, really. So we clash and all those other things don't happen. Sound of the door, heavy, heavy, heavy. This car competes with cars like the, the BMW 3 Series and the BMW 4 Series. So you get a bit more luxury in this car than uh, the other smaller ones. For comfort, the seats are quite comfortable. My feet don't feel as comfortable as I, I, I think they should be. But another great addition in this car is that your backrest reclines. So for longer, for longer journeys, you can just sit back, put your hand on the handrest. Oh, how am I forgetting this? Sit back, relax, and have the driver drive you out. To make the ride even more supple and more and more comfortable, you get double wishbone front suspension and rear independent suspension at the back. So each wheel, each wheel acts on its own in the road really on Tama to have you planted as much as possible. So that helps with comfort and how the car feels. What I like is that you still have your armrest and your cup holder at the end. So you can still put your hand here and be okay. Materials are, you get your cloth materials on the seats. You get this, this pleather. You get this pleather on the door trim at the top. It's soft. Cloth material again, a bit of leather again down here and your wood trim. I like how the wood trim looks. This red, is this, it has this red tint, which is really nice. Fit and finish, the car definitely feels solid. For a car of this age, to still be this, just shows you the, real, the reliability of Toyota, really, and on, on how they, they put the cars together and for how long they can still go. And yeah, I don't feel much shake or much, much noise in the seats or on the doors. Coming to the center seat, one thing before I even get there is how big the transmission tunnel is. I don't know if the transmission tunnel is, is performance oriented, so it's just big naturally to push all that power in the, the rear wheels or what, but it's generally really big. I think it's the biggest I've seen so far in any car I've been on this far. So coming into the center seat, you get raised up a bit of the seat and even your back is brought forward so them the behind and you you're in front for knee space i have enough knee space for feet for foot space uh it's it's there it's ish ish you get then for head space my head if i sit that straight my head touches the, the roof so for guys sitting in the center space in this mark x it's not really it's not really that comfortable or maybe it's not made, meant to have a, a third person here yeah? but you can have a third person if you really have to put a third person on the seat. Yeah, that's the back seat. Let's get into the front seat. The front seat of the Mark X. Being that this car is not the push start, you get the normal key, they just put in and start. The, the, the other models that have the push start button, you take, you have it and you put it into a slot, then you press the car to put it on. How does it feel being here at the front? One thing I can say is, the A-pillar feels quite low, like it's so close to my eye. I think because of the shape of the car and the look or the sportiness of the car, this pillar had to be narrowed closer to the, had to be narrowed a bit so that it can have that nice sporty look on the outside. Sitting, sitting dead straight, I have enough head, head space. It's not much, but just enough. For leg space, the, the seats are all automatic. So moving it forward, moving it back, up, down, is all automatic. You get the usual like your telescoping or steering wheel that moves up, down, right and forward to set it at your at your optimal driving position. This being the standard car, you don't get other extra buttons to control your infotainment and other things on the steering wheel. You only get blank buttons to show that there's something supposed to be there, but it's not there. Visibility all round is quite it's quite all right for storage spaces you have storage spaces on your on your door pockets that extend out for if you want to put bigger items the only things that you can't put you can't put bottles in there because it's quite small and the space in between you and the door is not much your cup holder is here at the center get this this is really nice shifter it's it reminds me of the of the 2008 premium the circular ring and the clear top bit 
I don't know if that if the premium was um, a copy of this, but I like how the shifter looks. All the materials, you get leather trim here on the sides, leather on your armrests, you have this nice veneer, this clear veneer, where if you open that, you get more storage uh, over there. Then you get your infotainment system, your climate control stuff, and, and yeah. At the top, you get your hazards in this crystal kind of look. Hmm, BMW, where did you get your crystal gear shift idea from? And your vents open and close, actually. You can open them and close them, and you can see sunglasses holder, which is standard these days to have. Before I get to the engine, what do I like? I like the materials used. It makes me it makes me feel like I'm in a really premium car. But if I cover this badge here, I would really feel I'm in one of those German cars, except one without leather. And for me, I appreciate the cloth material other than leather. If it's especially if it's not perforated because it gets really hot during our hot days here in Kenya. I like how the how the vents for the air controls look, the way they you can cover them up and not get to see any holes you have surround systems for Kaza Kimbo 25 they actually put a lot of thought in this car and a lot of, of, of premium quality stuff just make the car feel that much more executive or luxurious so let's open the lights open the hood and see how the engine looks the rear wheel drive models have a six-speed torque converter automatic transmission as standard and the four-wheel drive models have a five-speed automatic. No manual transmissions were offered. The X is well known for its powerful six-cylinder engine. It comes with either the 2.5-liter 212 horsepower 4GR FSE engine or the 3-liter 252 horsepower 3GR FSE engine options. A lot in the mouth, I know. With an average fuel economy of 8.3 km per liter in the city and 12.8 km per liter on highway running. In keeping the total tradition, the Mac X is reliable and inexpensive to maintain. The parts are shared across many Toyotas and therefore are affordable and easy to find. The X is a reliable car with no major long-term problems. The V6 is a big engine that requires the owner to be punctual with its maintenance and care with genuine parts. Safety-wise, it passed the Japanese end cap testing and passed with 6 stars for driver protection and 5 stars for passenger protection. And being that it wasn't offered in European and American markets, it was not subjected to the Euro NCAP safety tests. Anyway, if you're in the market for a used, reliable, fast, but yet comfortable super saloon, this is one of the great choices you got out there. And not to mention the sleeper she is within. You get maximum material potential for all those who have been looking for a project car and call the rest history. Thank me later if you get one. Thank mm -hmm. you.